the question I wanted to ask is how do you collaborate with your your co-author on many of these books, Stephen? I mean, what is the process for getting the material together and then threading it into the narrative? All right. So you asked, I'll answer, but I'll warn you, it's a uh, probably not very interesting or useful answer. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe it is. But um, so, yeah, the way this works is I have this great, phenomenal co-author named Steve Levitt, who's an economist at the University of Chicago. And what Levitt does mostly is empirical research, find a uh, a scenario where he can find some data, or maybe you find some data first, or you come up with a question, you go hunting for data, and he writes academic papers. At least this was what we did pretty much for the first two books, Free Economics and Super Free Economics. And, and in some cases, it's pretty simple. He would have written an academic paper that I would then take and essentially translate into, you know, common English. And mm -hmm. then you know, we would talk it through certainly a lot. And, you know, sometimes I'd have to ask him to explain parts of the paper, especially the theory parts. But then in addition to just, you know, translating it, one thing that I always try to do in writing is tell a story. So you can have a conclusion, a set of data that reaches a conclusion. Uh, we talked about um, the economics of selling crack cocaine, for instance, or, you know, the data seeming to show that sumo wrestlers, for instance, collude with one another to manipulate the rankings. So the data in and of themselves are a good story. But most people don't really assimilate data or theory or rational argument the same way that they do a story. And I think that the power of a story is just unbelievably strong. And I, I, I don't think I'm saying anything that people don't know. But I think that a lot of really smart people, when they're trying to get a point across or when they're trying to persuade someone of their point of view, they forget why stories work so well. They work so well, I think, for a number of reasons, one of which is that we're all narcissists to some degree. And so when we're hearing a story, we maybe even subconsciously insert ourselves into the narrative <laughs> to kind of see you know, how we'd play like, man – I wouldn't have gone for that deal selling drugs for only, you know, eight bucks an hour or whatever. So the collaboration honestly takes many, many, many forms because not all, all of our work is so neat as having an academic paper. So I would say that for every single story, every single page really in any of our books, there's kind of a different iteration or version of how the collaboration takes place. Sometimes Levitt will have done a lot of heavy lifting and produced a, a story in data that I then translate sometimes. It's something that I go out and do a lot of reporting on and then write a narrative, then I'll throw it to him and see what he has to say with it. Um, you know, he lives in Chicago. I'm in New York. We don't work together physically all that often. And honestly, there's only one kind of work together that is practical at all, which is uh, basically brainstorming where, where it's nice to have the tight in-person feedback loop mm -hmm. um, for all other forms of collaboration, reading, editing, uh, you know, critiquing, saying this sucks. You know, we threw away hundreds of pages on Think Like a Freak. However long this book is, we definitely threw away many more pages than we ended up with. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, there's a, a lot of that back and forth. And honestly, I think it's great. I, I mean, I think one of the hardest things about being a writer is uh, critiquing your own work. And Definitely. that's why any writer who's had a good editor knows how valuable that is. So if you have a collaborator who thinks like you do, but with a different angle, he's the economist, I'm the journalist, I think it helps make it stronger. So that's the collaboration.